This is so nice. I, I seldom get invited back any place, and so this is, this is very sweet. And I brought nice weather with me, too. Boy, it's, it's lovely. <clears throat> so I don't predict. I only take snapshots of moments in time which turn into a motion picture that points to trends. You can tell I've been saying this over and over and over and over again. But I will tell you this, that we released a poll yesterday for possibly my most important client over the years. We've been polling for the Weekly Reader. Does everybody know the Weekly Reader? Yeah. <clears throat> and we've been polling for them since 1996, but I don't know how long they've been doing this poll of kids. And you know that the kids have always gotten the winner? <laughs> always. In 2000 and in 2004, they got the winner, which meant we got the winner. Um, and so yesterday, uh, we released Obama 55 and McCain 43. And so that's what the kids have to say. Then we'll see November 5th if there's this huge generation chasm in this country <laughs> or not. But We're going to have a very simple agenda over the next 25 minutes. I'm going to lay out for you the basic themes of the election, and then I'm going to discuss uh, my book, and then you're going to buy the book. Oh, you already bought it. Oh, good. Then I'm going to sign the book, and then I'm going to get the hell out of here. Okay. <laughs> so I'll keep this short. You just saved a lot of time here. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most historic election in our lives, and it will be the most historic election for the rest of our lives. I'm going to lay out for you what I think are the five dominant themes that de define this election. There are five. Number one, very serious crisis. Now, this isn't new. It's no surprise, obviously, in the last month with the financial crisis. But you need to understand that for two years, American voters have been saying that this country is in a very serious crisis. Today, 75% describe the country as in a very serious crisis. 80%, sometimes more, say that the country is heading in the wrong direction. At the peak of Watergate, neither of those items ever went beyond 65%. This goes back to when people were worried first and foremost about Iraq, and then a very close second was health insurance, the number one source of status anxiety in the country today. That's what Americans tell us, that the difference between me and the middle class and me and poverty is either a health catastrophe or losing my health insurance. One in three who have employer-related health insurance are afraid of losing some or all of that coverage in the next 12 months. But then it's gone beyond that with the financial crisis of the last month. Under very serious crisis, this president has set a record for low job approval ratings. In my poll for Reuters last week, 21%. That's the lowest ever recorded for any president. He beats his own record at 23, and Harry Truman's at 23 after he fired Douglas MacArthur, and then Richard Nixon at 23 the day before he resigned the presidency. Not to be outdone and always to be bipartisan, Congress's job approval rating is 10 Last month it was nine. My friend James Carville would say, well, they've increased 11.1% over last month. <laughs> what is a 10? I used to poll for the New York Post. And in 1995, I did a question on OJ's job approval rating. And OJ got a 16 in 1995. That's just by way of context. Very serious crisis. Number two, 
the return of the center, the vital center in American politics. It's the center that defines our elections and then ultimately determines what the mandate for the next president is. And the reason why it's important that I say the return of the center is because the center was on sabbatical in 2004. It was missing. As early as November of 03, I was calling the 04 election the Armageddon election. We had already split into two hostile, hyper-partisan, warring political cultures going into that election. By March of 04, when we knew John Kerry would be the nominee, only 5% of American voters were undecided. And it remained 5% all year, just 5%. But this year, we have a larger undecided, 6 or 7%, and another 10% who are squishy in their support. But more importantly, more people are calling themselves independents and political moderates, and they are defining this election. And without any irony at all, in fact, it's fitting in many ways, both nominees, Barack Obama and John McCain, achieved their nominations because of the strong credentials that they had in the political center, not on the fringes of the party. But importantly, when we asked all voters, what are the most important, most important characteristics you're looking for in the next president of the United States? Driven by that sizable middle, this is what over 80% said was most important in the next president. Number one, a problem solver. Number two, a consensus builder. Number three, someone who can manage the government competently. Number four, someone who can command the military. And number five, someone with strong personal values. Don't mistake that with strong Christian values. That came in dead last. Driven by this middle, that is what over 80% of American voters say is most important to them. Not one of those is partisan, and not one of those is ideological. And that's what drives this election. Number three, <coughs> the great disconnect. At the same time that this middle is coming back and coming back larger and defining this election, inside the Beltway in Washington, that institution of Congress is dominated by two hostile political parties. Hyperpartisanship reigns supreme inside the Beltway. In fact, it is, we are at the most hyperpartisan that we have been in Washington, D.C. since the onset of the Civil War. Now, people find this hard to believe, but not too long ago, George McGovern and Barry Goldwater were the best friends in the U.S. Senate. They used to play racquetball with each other. Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan, you were at each other's throats during the day, but they always found time to play poker, drink scotch, and tell some stories. Those days of camaraderie are very seldom. In fact, they're almost entirely missing 